Guys, what's up? Welcome back to uh, RC Sparks Reboot Shop Talk. And Stock. today I got my buddy Greg here from GKA Parts. You want to tell me about it? It's GKA Custom RC Parts. I make parts for the arm a lot. Nice. Well, right. what can you say? He's been on uh, the other channel already where we talked about his Typhon. And uh, you all saw that we had a uh, Nero on the table. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, this is a hot topic right now. Uh, and we figured we'd cover it on RC Sparks Reboot because it's a little bit more open and raw. Right now, this brand is owned by Hobbyco, and Hobbyco recently announced that they are filing for Chapter 11 in the U.S. In the U.S. Yeah, uh, really, which is kind of making a lot of us. I'm a new Arma owner myself. Here, let me get around the table so I can see the other side. Um, and I really like the brand. I think the brand is strong. I think that the trucks are very durable. This one looks like one of the coolest <laughs> without the body. It looks better without the body, it does. Greg. It does. Okay, and so show me some parts that you make on the Nero. As of right now, I only make the rocker arms. One part. One part, yes. Right. One part, four in the set. A questionable part. Questionable part, yes, they have broke. Okay, yeah, well, not just questionable because they have broken for you in the past. But questionable about what's going on with Hobbyco. Right, and so since you're a manufacturer of this, can you tell me your opinion or what you may know about the Nero and what's happened with these parts in particular? I can't per se on what's happening with the Hobby Co. with what's going on with them. Um, all I know is it's a similar design to right. what's going on over at Tra uh, Traxxas there. Right. Um, so he's talking, these rocker arms right here, you actually, I make, actually these. make these. Yes. Before any of this stuff happened, and, and we want to say right here, look at this. This I've jumped right into it, and I should have stopped and said, hey, this is the Arma Nero. You know, we're, we're like in heated conversation of what's going on. The Arma Nero looks hands down amazing. It looks like a yes. Mad Max vehicle. You know, it's like beautiful the, truck. the cage, the way these uh, batteries get slapped in. There's a battery on either side. Yep. The Nero like loads like cartridges through the bottom where the batteries go up. Yeah, go ahead, please. Flip Look over. at this. Remember, if you have a Nero, spray this down with some grease. They get stuck. Right, come on. Okay, so there Simple. the batteries fit in like two cartridges. Plus on the front, and on the back, they've got these cooling holes. So when you're actually driving, yeah, these are both open on either side. Yep. It's got oh, these cooling holes to help everything stay cold. But the issue is, is that these suspension arms are very close to the Traxxas Revo up over there. Okay, here it is right here. This is the suspension on the E Revo from Traxxas. And so I've worked with both brands to show off their vehicles before. And I don't really, I'm not a brand, brand, sorry guys, I know a lot of this made you upset, but that actually needs some work. <laughs> it can take it, man. It's an E-Revo. I'm not upset. It's a basher. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, when we look at something like this, so the issue with Traxxas and Hobbyco and Arma is that this is a copyright patent infringement. Yes. Copyright, yeah. yeah. It, it's the same design. And it's whoever yeah. patents it first gets to use it. So I'm, I That's think right. what's confusing for me, I think what's confusing for me is why would a company do that, number one? Why would a designer do that unless they didn't know or they thought it was good and and so that's what we were talking about and it's very confusing as a consumer and people that actually promote both brands or, or you know you make mm -hmm. parts this impacts you as a business owner now it does yeah right it does because sales go down on the whole narrow setup and we have to worry about Nero as a brand disappearing yeah and part support you know, but at least right now, and for the moment, you are. Do you have stock of these right now? Yes, I do. Good. Okay, I'll put a link to your uh, website in the, you know, description box down below. What do you think is going to happen to Hobby Coast? What do you, do you have any speculation? You're close. You're part of the Arma Facebook groups. You have contacts inside with Arma. Are you able to say anything that anyone doesn't know? Um. Pretty I, I don't know what's going on with the corpse. I honestly yeah, me don't either. know what's going on with the whole thing. All I know is it's extremely, as you saw, it's extremely similar. Yeah. Um, 
So tell me, do you, do you support Traxxas in their decision to move forward on something like this? Or is this like a, I don't have anything to say kind of moment? No, you want to know my honest opinion? I, I don't think Traxxas should move along with it. it it's, this is a hobby for everyone to enjoy. This is a hobby where everyone enjoys. It doesn't matter if it's Red Cat, Traxxas, HPI, Techno, mm -hmm. Team Durango, as mm -hmm. they're going bye bye, which is kind of a little bit uh, I don't like because they're a lot of brands are a lot of brands are disappearing they these are. days. They are right, but that also has to do with innovation, technology. It does um, keeping up with the that, times. Keeping up with the times. Keeping up with the, what the consumers want. How people are buying things online, exactly. brick and mortar, yeah. supply and demand. Yeah. Um, and you know, one of the things I've been talking about recently is copy products, right? And, and I've been trying to become more educated about copycat products or cheaper brands, you know, and, and a lot of people say, well, you know, these are just coming out of Asia or these are like Chinese brands or cheap mm -hmm. Chinese brands or, and, and I don't want to stereotype it like that, but I have to say that RCs are made across the pond in Asia. Most of them from all of the major brands, except for the ones that are truly uh, mined and made here back at home, right? Yeah. Like your aluminum parts here. Yeah, made right in the same town I live in. Right here. Yeah, right but, there. But also expensive to make, unless you're doing yes. it on a mass scale. Exactly, and that's where China and the overseas market comes they in. They can huge do manufacturers. It. They can do it for cheaper because they got the they machinery, can. they got the manpower, yeah, they got the discipline to work and, all hours and, of the night. And on my hobby co video, on my last like when I was reading the 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 press release from Hobby Co of what chapter 11 was going to be and all that stuff. I said, you know, support your local brands. And what I've been finding out more and more because I've been to Hong Kong, we did go to one of the factories when we were down there and I got to speak to a lot of distributors, including RC four wheel drive and all those guys is I found that we have been paying a lot of money for stuff at home, even though it's been bought overseas. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of gets skewed because somebody like Greg here is making their products at home and they're making it out of passion, but they only have limited ability. So it takes extra help to get the marketing out there. Exactly. Hence why we do videos like this. So it's like opening up a can of worms on either side, man. There's so many things going on right now. It's really hard to take sides. And I just wanna, even though this is gonna end kinda sappy because I don't want this to go on forever, I want you guys to remember that we're all in the hobby together. We're there because it's passionate. Some of us are in it for business, mm -hmm. which is true. Manufacturing, yeah. if you can do it to you know keep your hobby going, yeah, then... like this completely pays for my hobby. It's something I love doing. I love sitting behind a computer, designing it, being one-on-one -on -one with the machinist, going over the prototypes, it's perfect. Improving people's vehicles. Yeah, helping the, our, helping the industry. Helping people have a better time. That's right. It's, it's hard for me to figure out, like, an, uh, and we'll get into it more later on, but in, in other episodes, but guys, when you remember, I know there's a lot of brand specific people out there and, and I'm cool with that. I love all brands, any RC that can make me smile and that's quality and is worth my money. That makes me happy, you know, and uh, the whole thing with Hobbyco, our heart goes out to them. They've been such a huge player for such a long time. I don't know if it's going to get fixed. We still want to see companies like yours making parts, well, right? Yeah, I would love to still make parts. and. I'd love to see these cars still keep being made. Yeah. It's a shame that these had to be stopped. Yeah. Hey, in, instead of booing and hooing about what's going on, do you want to take it out and go for a rip? Let's go have fun. Let's go for a rip. Let's go have fun. Yeah, so, we got that. so we get a little action on Chop Doc. <laughs> well, and here's how it fits in, I think. You can't even get the Arma Nero anymore, right? They've got a yeah. freeze on this. They got a freeze. Some places still have them in stock. Really? Some places don't, but down in the States, you cannot get them. I don't think people really appreciate yet that you're taking this out a limited edition truck in the minus 20 right now. I'll send it. It doesn't matter. Such an awesome looking truck. You got some power in that thing? Let's see what you got. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, hey little doggy. Man, it's slippery today. 
Nice long wheelbase. Look at that, and that's ice over there. Fresh powder, definitely minus 20 degrees Celsius, holy cow. It sounds so mean, man. Yeah, chewing through. No, it's cool. So does it have reverse? Does it, Nero, um, Nero has reverse, yeah? It's slow. Okay, and, but one of the features of it has locking diffs, correct? Yep. I just locked my diffs to get out of there. Okay, so explain to the viewers, even though some people may or may not know, why you would have remote locking and unlocking differentials in a it's monster for, truck. It's for stunting. You got your all diffs unlocked, which yeah. is right now, Yeah. right? Yeah. That's for your bashing, having fun, doing whatever you need to do. You got your center diff lock. Yeah. That's for, I believe, the wheelies. Okay. This thing is a wheelie monster. Ah, I see. When we have traction. When you have traction. <laughs> then you got your center and rear, which is your drift mode. Yes, I see that. So you can actually sit there and drift around and have yes. fun. Then you got your all locked, which locks all your diffs and it becomes and you can a crawler. Get, get out of the, Ah, nice. So it's trying to encompass all in one, man. Thank you. No longer available. <laughs> See, at the RC Spark Studio, he says, I'm, I don't need to race it around and jump when it's minus 20. I'll just rip it around. And then you can't help but jump. <laughs> the jumps are right there. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, came down hard. Beautifully executed. Oh! <laughs> you guys don't know, we're, we're crunching through the snow here. It's been pretty wind whipped. Get her floating, get her floating. Oh, she's there you go. Very nice. Amazing. Oh yeah. Keep her going, see if you can get out. Nothing, look at that, dug down. I'll give you a push. Holy cow, it's in there deep. That is what she said. Ugh. Uh. Woohoo! Perfect! You're moving, oh, we got one busted knuckle. Let's bring her in. <laughs> like he says, he sent it. Oh, not me easy. There you go. I think it came down just a little rough. There you go. Oh, popped out of the top. Yeah. No. Oh, it oh, split it's it. Split, yeah. Well, you know what? If my if my fingers got hit right now, my fingers would split. <laughs> you tell me all that bashing, minus 20 degree weather. Yeah, it made it, man. I was surprised. And have you soaked this in WD-40 or anything? No. No extra no. strength? No. Yeah. Okay, long live Arma. You know, earlier we were mentioning that all cars, most cars, get uh, made overseas. And uh, sometimes, you know, they use interchangeable parts and just rebrand them. Like Greg was just saying to me when I swap, swapped it around here, this, this you think is a hobby wing? It's a hobby wing. It's a rebranded hobby wing. You know, how many times do we see rebranded parts uh, show up and it's totally acceptable because they're just being sold to different brands to put their names on it. What actually defines a copy part now? And how do we know if these companies are actually paying exclusivity rights on those parts? Like this obviously wouldn't have been an exclusivity thing because many brands use hobby wing and rebrand their parts. Was it designed by Traxxas? And I think that's for me, essentially, when we're talking about court case and people getting sued, who, who owned the patent? Whoever owned the patent should be protected against other companies from taking it from them, unless it's been changed. 
And I guess that's where I sit on that. Mm -hmm. People are going to ask because I'm sorry. I know we, we, we did it. Um, but, you know, so guys, we want to know what you think. You know, I, I, I've tried to sign off on this video a few times, but it's in my mind. Please let us know what you think in the video description or in the video comment section down below. I'm frozen from being outside. I found that cold out there. I, I got to say overall, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I just got run over by a bus. <laughs> I think this car looks amazing. It's it's real or truck or whatever we want to call it, truggy. I think it looks amazing. It's sad that we probably won't see many of these again in the future, but you never know. With everything we've said, we may see a similar design come back out under a different brand name, and we once again may get an opportunity to or explore. Or makes it, they yeah. redesign the whole suspension setup. Yeah, exactly. And well, there's, exa it, there's yeah. so much room to redesign it and still keep the same platform. So much more room. Guys, thanks a lot. Let us know what you think.